Now let's look at um, IV, our current voltage curve, specifically uh, current density voltage curve for different types of fuel cells. This is an um, example plot for three different types of fuel cells. Okay, taken from the textbook by Dr. Fuller. And uh, the vertical axis would be cell potential, cell potential, and uh, which would be the terminal potential that you measured between the anode and the cathode, between the hydrogen electrode and the oxygen electrode. The horizontal axis would be current density in the unit of kilo amp per meter uh, square kilo amp per meter square and uh, remember 10 kilo amp per meter square is roughly one amp per centimeter square okay so you may find uh, people use kilo amp per meter square or you may also find uh, um, amp per centimeter square both are quite often um, encountered uh, for fuel cell testing and here we have three types of fuel cells, three types of fuel cells. The black solid triangle, the black solid triangle represent AFC, alkaline fuel cell, operated at, in this case, 82 degrees C, and it is between hydrogen as fuel, pure oxygen as oxidant, and pressurized, 414 kilopascal, roughly 4 atmosphere the black solid square the black solid square represent pm uh, proton exchange membrane fuel cell or polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell operate at 80 degrees c this case it's hydrogen as fuel but ambient air as the oxidant and the pressure is around one atmosphere or 100 kilopascal Finally, the third one, this open circle, open circle, it's for solid oxide fuel cell, but operate because it's solid electrolyte, it operates a uh, ceramic electrolyte, it operates at much higher temperature, in this case, 800 degrees C, 800 degrees C, much higher temperature, and using oxygen, hydrogen as fuel, pure oxygen as the oxidant, and at ambient pressure, one atmosphere. Okay, so we have the uh, potential versus current density, JV curve for three types of fuel cell. But you see, the behavior is highly similar. This JV curve, in a way, is very similar. At zero current density, at the zero current density, the voltage, the cell terminal voltage, is very close, around 1.1 volt, a little bit lower, a little bit higher, but it's close to 1.1 volt, which we have shown before how to get that number. That's the open circuit voltage value. Okay, and then from there, as the current density, as the fuel cell is discharged, as the chemical is converted, chemical energy is converted into electrical energy with higher and higher current density and more and more power, the cell terminal voltage drops. Cell terminal voltage drops. And uh, of course, for two of the cases, it shows that when you go to very high current density, the cell overall potential drops to pretty low value. For example, the cutoff voltage as 0.3 volt. Okay, so no matter what types of fuel cell, their behavior is very similar. They start from more or less the same open circuit voltage, and the cell terminal voltage decreases with increasing current density. Okay. And uh, we can generally separate the JV curve, the current density voltage curve, into three regions. In the beginning, with very low current density, low current density, the reaction, the electrochemical full cell reaction, would be limited by electrode activation. Or people say kinetics limited, kinetic limited region. Quite often, let's say around. Uh, Roughly one to two kiloamp per meter square, or one hundred or point one amp per centimeter square, one hundred milliamp per 
per centimeter square. That's quite often we have so-called low current density. We have uh, initial rapid drop in cell terminal voltage due to activation or kinetics. And then in the intermediate current density, in the intermediate current density, we have a more or less a linear relationship between cell potential and current density. And this region, this linear region, people quite often call um, the, it to be limited by ohmic resistance, by the electrolyte ohmic resistance or IR loss, limited by IR, I for current. Uh, R for resistance, IR gives us the voltage, the voltage loss due to ohmic resistance, mostly through the electrolyte. Okay, that's the intermediate region, a straight line. And then when the current density goes to higher and higher, for example, around the 10 to 20 uh, kiloamp per meter square or 1 to 2 amp per centimeter square, then you see this curve bent down dramatically which means the potential drops rapidly while the current doesn't really increase further. That is, we are running into limitation by mass transfer, the motion of mass, the move, movement of the reactant to the reaction side and the products away from the reaction side. Quite often, this is mass transfer limitation either by diffusion or by convection. Okay, so at a high current density, you find the curve bend down with sharper slope again, which means the potential would drop further without much increase in current. Why? Because you are limited by supply of reactant and the transport away of product. That's mass transfer limitation. You can further reduce the voltage for the cell, but you are not. We are not really gaining any current because we are limited by how much of species or mass can be supplied through diffusion or convection. Okay, so now we see the JV curve for three common types of fuel cells. The behavior are highly similar, almost the same open circuit voltage at zero current density. And then as current goes higher, the curves goes down. And the, how the curve goes down can often be separated into three regions. Initially, low current density, activation or kinetics limited, in between a straight line limited by IR or ohmic resistance, and then at high current density, it bends down again, bends down again, means mass transfer limitation. The transport of species uh, to the reaction site by diffusion or convection, mass transfer limitation. Okay.